Alright, welcome back folks. This is Jeremy with Care Services and Blamo Tutorials. Coming back with the second part to the decision structure that we're doing called part two, where we're going to look at the actual program here that we've built from the actual uh, pseudocode. And then we are going to go ahead and reverse engineer it and try to show you how to go from point A to point B. Now keep in mind this was previously recorded. I've had to slice and dice and cut it up and splice back together because we are going way too long with our ramblings and I want to make sure that you at least get this and see this. And uh, all right, let's get started. All right, here we are in a, uh, we're using uh, Visual C++ Express for uh, Visual Studios. And uh, what I've done here is I went ahead and you'll hear about declaring what you're doing here. You tell your file name, you know, I'm naming this rectangle area and I'm naming it with the C++ extension there. The programmer would be me. The purpose is this will get the area of two rectangles then tell the largest one. This actual C++ program works and we'll display that here in a second but what this does or what this is built for is the pseudocode so if you remember over here we built the pseudocode let me go back up to it as a uh, just a standard you know display input instead of using functions so I built that this way so you can see how we would take this and reverse engineer it okay so let's see here in reverse engineer into a flowchart. Alright, so see what we got here is they're giving us all this stuff here what with well I am should I say of what is going on. So you can look at something and kind of self explanatory the way things are laid out, see what's going on. Here you would have to make a pro uh, process box at your top with all this information in it. Uh, probably do the same thing here and just add this into a box below it because you're including all the stuff that you're going to need. This is the start of the program like we said before main but where they tell you in class that you need to name your flowchart where you start it's self-explanatory when you build any program that main is always going to be in it. So that's why they say just name your program. They're going to know that it's a main. Here I'm using an int main but you can because I'm returning zero down here but you can uh, make this void main. It doesn't matter. Just like in my pseudocode, I've, here's my variables and here, you know, as self-explanatory again, we're declaring Okay, we're going to declare our variables, and these are all the variables right here that we're going to use. Here we have two things called C out and one that's called C in. So out would, you would think of display, and then in, I guess if my pen will work, think of it as input. In, that's a U. It's hard to write on this tablet. I'm having a fit. Something's wrong with it probably the batteries <laughs> but so here you have the out so add the C right there and you're saying for C++ output equals the display and see the less than here that's how you push out that you're about to display something so when you see stuff like this just think of out as output maybe that would be better because when you output to the screen you're displaying and then when you input, you're taking whatever this is and storing it in there. Alright guys, sorry we're having some issues with the uh, tablet for real. But uh, where we left off, we had just done our displays for our C out and our C in. Uh, as you know, C out, you're outputting to the screen. And once you output, you're displaying. Uh, once the user enters in what you want, you store that in the CN here and uh, moving right along. So we got the same thing here because like I said I, I followed the pseudocode from our last tutorial in this one and having uh, two displays here and two displays here without putting them into a function. So maybe you can understand a little bit better than doing it the other way. Uh, 
we might do a tutorial on doing putting these into functions as well or modules however you want to look at it in this class uh, here we have our next statement we have a process box and we are going to set so here we are setting area one equal to length one times width one and area two is equal to length two times width two. So next is here is the toughest part, I think, of what people are doing. We have uh, what is starting our if statement. I'm starting to think that I'm not supposed to be using this tablet anymore because I'm having some major issues. But anyway, moving right along, let's break this down. You have an if statement here, so let's have our if statement you have a true and then you have a false the true is going to go ahead and see out here that the rectangle is bigger and then we're going to come down here and finish out uh, next is your else if else if is another decision so here we're going to have an, our next process box I know this is very shoddy but that's all right and then if that is false let's go ahead and do true false false and then next if it's so if decision one is not true is true we end if decision two is true then we come down here now remember what I said the last time guys you've got to close off your if statements I know that with my program that I was using it screwed up and it smushed these two lines together and basically flattened it out but every if statement has to be closed out so here we have an if statement which is all of this and inside of this if statement we have an else if statement so this else if statement needs to be closed and then it needs to close out the if statement then come down and then uh, system pause now I don't know what they're going to use they uh, might use like a send get or something of that nature but that is your end so not sure what they would want you to put in there if this is it or if they just want you to do uh, do end either way it should be right and uh, you know moving right along you're done you know you've just reverse engineered a simple decision structure program if I was going to do a loop you know, loops are the same way. You know, you got your structure here. If it's true, we're going to come out here and do something. If it's false, usually if it's a while loop, it's just going to end. So you're not doing anything else. So here, if we wanted to display the size and we wanted to have somebody say, that's right, or hello world, you come over here and do your hello world. I'm just going to put a WH there. And once it displays that, it's going to come back up, back over to your line here, and it's going to loop. That's what a loop looks like. And actually, we're going to get into loops in the next tutorial. So stay tuned, and we will go through the while loop, which is this, and we'll go through the for loop. And get started on that right now. So guys, if you got any questions, comment, rate, and subscribe, please. And check us out on Facebook at facebook.com slash careservicesnc and careservices.com. Hi guys, have a good day.